The Kickstarter for Dungeons of Drakenheim is now live. After 52 episodes of their live campaign, the Dungeon Dudes decided to make a source book for you guys to explore. The city of Drakenheim was destroyed 15 years ago by falling stars, and is now in a state of dark magic turmoil as a result of powerful debris. This 5th edition source book will contain dozens of monsters, spells, magic items, exploration mechanics, and delirium crystals. These celestial remnants contain entirely new, volatile magic that will determine what the ruins of Drakenheim will become. In addition to the actual shards, we also have an eldritch fog called Haze that can contaminate and even mutate players and monsters alike. Go check out their campaign by clicking the link in the description. Give those dungeon dudes some love and explore their setting in a completely open-ended adventure. Thanks to those guys for sponsoring the video, which I hope you enjoy. Okay, so you're the DM, and the party is going apeshit, again, and none of them agree on a spotlight or a common goal or anything really, but this time it's in a store. One party member is hitting on the shopkeeper's daughter, one of them is swindling other customers trying to sell garbage, two of them are working together to steal everything that isn't bolted down, and one of them is doing... <sighs> is, he, is he eating mold off the wall? So. As the DM, you want to run a reasonable encounter, make a lifelike city, and bring the party back together. Oh look, here comes Stop a guard right patrol. There, Obviously Scott. that situation was a little tame, but there's a handful of reasons that your party might run in with the law. Wizards might be using contraband magic, back alley fights have turned into murder, high scale theft has gone wrong, or I tried to kidnap that one noble way back then and I got unwillingly put in the secret service when they caught me. But it's your players. You know that they break the law, and you know how. But arresting them is tough, and it should never look like a Skyrim level of organization where 50 people run at you one by one and then they all die because your armor has AoE. So let's do what we did last time, but instead create side-by-side -side situations because I like to challenge myself and my editor. So most often, your players probably commit crimes in local shops or alleyways. Which actually, more than likely isn't true. I'm used to crime in open, broad daylight or home invasions, but let's go with a shop in an alley next to it, just for simplicity. Look, there they are. I drew those. Thank you, Dungeon Scrawl. Let's throw three players in the main shop, and one of them waiting for them in the alley. Before we introduce Crime Patrol, let's create the drama's context first, because, you know, they're never actually involved in the context. Okay, alley scene. This lone player gets approached by a criminal with a knife. Nothing crazy, not really scary at all, so one round later the criminal is screaming like a baby because they've received a broken wrist from a 6th level monk. At the same time, because I control probability as the writer, one of the storegoers grabs a prized item while the shopkeep is occupied with charisma. But the yelling outside resets the owner's attention and they are able to notice the theft. Now we get to look at the popo. For the size of this city, I'll make it a bit larger than an average settlement. Let's say it's a major travel rest stop with lots of trade and rare goods, meaning it has to be heavily policed. So in the shop district, there'd be at least one of them on the block. As for their ethics, let's please just not be topical and pretend that none of them are on a power trip. So our guards will simply do their jobs and take the proper steps because this is nothing more than a video demonstration. For fantasy. As for equipment, let's give them a tiny little arsenal. A well-stocked guard would likely have, in addition to armor and a spear or two, ball bearings or caltrips because they're easier to manufacture, a whistle, a light crossbow or a small bow, a net, manacles, and a rope, obviously, because ropes. Okay, back to the scene. A man is shouting in pain, and a guard comes running while blasting into his whistle. This alerts, let's say, 1d8 other guards in the immediate area. Ironically, and I'm sticking to it, I rolled an 8. The surprise round that surprised everyone but this monk is now over. One guard is here, standing on the other side of the alleyway. Two more are running from either direction on the far main road, with more of them in tow. Their collective goal, to subdue the party and stop them from causing further damage or distress. In this specific situation, it would be easy to arrest and question both people in the alley. However, as the next round starts, the thief bursts out the side door and into the alley. The shopkeeper reacts by shouting at them, which causes the guard passing by the door to catch wind. Already this is a bit confusing as the guards now have two different contexts for the situation. That's okay though, they'll just arrest everybody. 
The other two party members begin to panic, one hanging back to hide in the shop while the other goes to join the rest of the party. The round ends, four guards are surrounding the alley and one stands outside the shop's main door. This is where simple demands are made to everyone, including the thug with the busted mugger. Hey, uh, you committed crimes here, we, we gotta bring you in. Look, weapons down, hands up, and this can all go quick. Start of the next round, let's say we have a shitty everyman in the party who wants to surrender. The party itself, having a thief, will likely quickly remedy that. But if everyone agrees, the only person to put up a short fight would be the alley-goer. But this is D&D and that'll never happen. The guards will then wait for a response, readying various actions while they wait for the reinforcements that they might need. So with this round, let's explore probability. Let's say the party tries to run without fighting. If somebody starts scaling a building, they'll hopefully get weighted down with nets that are thrown at them. If someone goes invisible, which is probably a common crime, they might employ caltrips, nets, body blocking, or flower bombs to find them. If someone manages to get away, the guards have trained whistleblows to imply which direction you're headed and what type of route you're taking. If teleportation or successful escape becomes an issue, they'll either drop the chase and put out a small bounty, or for higher crimes, they'll contact a church diviner to find you. Outcome number two, the party blatantly fights back. The guards' priorities here will instantly shift. Instead, they'll be setting their sights on evacuating locals like the shopkeeper before proceeding with the party. If the party manages to use overwhelming force, the guards will draw back and contact higher authorities like hired killers or stronger forces to face the party later. If they match the guards and become bottlenecked, the sheer amount of reinforcements should exhaust the party's resources. If the party gets overwhelmed, the guards will stop at around half their hit points and simply ask to place manacles on them before things get worse. If things get worse, the manacles come out after a concussion. The guards could also employ more abstract ways of subduing crime, ranging from the perfectly humane man-catcher to powders that overwhelm the senses, or just straight-up sleep magicians for hire. And of course, the aftermath. This is mostly up to you, but a few things could happen. A bribe could get the party off easy. They could enjoy a quaint court visit, or just be instantly sentenced based on the crime. Who needs eyewitnesses if you're not even from around here? Well, enjoy this bit of forbidden knowledge, and I bet this little research project of mine will rip up a lot of tables. I did good here today. Thanks for watching.